we are back from a short break and before we went for a break we talked on offenses dealing with offenses as a minister and also how to invest in online ministry developing effective communication skills and also effective uh, uh, machines or equipment that you need in order to uh, be you know uh, be excellent in your presentation as a minister we are just from a, sh a short break and now we are going to have a question from one of our pastors in the live audience welcome sir thank you so much my name is pastor Stephen Cavetu and uh, I have two questions question number one is about the issue of uh, tent making and I'm tempted to think that uh, this is a plan B when we talk about the issues of faith my question is do we have a plan B that's question number one question number two is about the question of the national prayer days and my question is what is the biblical view about uh, the national prayer days because we know that in a country we cannot have one faith we have different faiths so how how should these national prayer days be approached thank you thank you sir thank you very much so the first question is on tent making right and is it a plan b or is it out of faith i agree with the the pastor is a plan b lily paul was doing tent making because he wanted to support himself he wanted to ensure he is not a burden to the people he was preaching to but ultimately the calling of god upon his life and the anointing and the grace upon his life was enough to sustain him and the bible declares that those that preach the gospel the lord commanded that they shall live by the gospel but there's another addition i'll make the plan b may appear like is lack of faith however apostles and leaders are permitted by the lord to build and do ministry the way they see the way they find best so paul found it best to support himself and not be a burden to the people and the lord allowed that for him and so though the other churches thessalonians Philippians supported him. Uh, later on, actually in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse uh, 13, he comes and kind of apologizes for preaching to them free. It says, for what is it in which you are inferior to other churches, except that I myself was not burdensome to you, forgive me this wrong. I should have been a burden to you. In other words, I should have ministered to you like he told the Galatians that those who saw the word to you, you need to share with them your good things. Uh, however, there's this illustration in Matthew 25, very interesting, parable. Someone was given one talent, somebody two talents, another five talents. I tend to believe also the other side of it is that there are certain pastors who have five talents. One talent is to preach. And so if they would want to use the other talent, because like Paul, that's what he did. He could do business. You are welcome. But you are given two talents, which is to pray and to preach. <laughs> you have to still be supported by God through those two strategies of prayer and preaching. And, uh, but in the New Testament, feel free to serve the Lord step by step there are seasons when actually it is advisable as a young pastor and the congregation is small the incomes in the church are small it's advisable if you want to still work on the side and do the tents but if you have enough grace and faith and maturity to literally stay without working then also don't complain and don't also cry to God because then you haven't used the wisdom that he provides. Are we together? Then a time comes, ministry grows and expands and is actually able to take care of you. And even if you really love to do business, you can say, uh, you know, I make up my mind. 
I'm gonna spend all my time and energy and focus on this assignment. Like the apostle Peter, you know, said, we must give ourselves to the ministry of prayer and the word. Are we together? And on the other matter, on national, you want me to comment on the national prayer? Uh, Kenya is a secular country, constitutionally, not necessarily a religious country. So administratively, the president has a right to do whatever he would find best. Remember, he's not a bishop. One time, <laughs> one time, the Lord spoke to me because now I know politics will begin. And many ministers take sides and become very passionate. You know the way we are passionate with the gospel? Mm -hmm. Is how we get passionate with the politics, politics. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And the political parties, the Lord told me one time, this political party is not a ministry, it's not a church. And the head of the party is not a bishop. So don't be so kind of sold out to them. It's not a ministry. These are just secular men that are doing what they must do. And so handle them with a pinch of salt. Handle them with care. But because we are all Kenyans, I use this principle from a point of maturity. Anybody trying to draw near to God, he, is, he begins the journey to come. He gets lost and he goes to a strange God. But from his heart, he is trying to talk to God and he's trying to come. Don't discourage him from coming. One day he will find that junction has been closed. Mm. He will come all the way and find Jesus is the way and come in. Mm. You know, draw near to God and you draw near to you. Of course, there are those who are worshipping other gods. Uh, we know that. But then they don't know that. Mm. And so they have their rights as Kenyans to, to do the praying, as it were. Of course, it doesn't add a lot of value. But listen, uh, how many of you remember there was a Dagon, a Dagon God somewhere? and it was placed somewhere, and then some operations happened at night. He had bowed down in the morning. So if, they are, if you are given the opportunity to show up in that room to collect the debris of Dagon, I'm sure you'd be very happy to collect. Mm -hmm. You know, to pick, say, this was a head, this was a head. Hey, our God is greater than this. You are picking the head and so forth. And you are in that room. It may have been an altar. Mm -hmm. It doesn't defile you, because mm -hmm. you know who you are as it were. For the sake of peace and love and unity when they are praying. Uh, for me, probably, maybe the person who prays the last prayer, to me, is more important. <laughs> the last prayer. Yeah. <laughs> in that program. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Pastor Sut, please comment on uh, the questions that uh, the pastor raised on tent making and the national prayer days. Uh, how think, effective are they? I think he has answered them very well. Yeah. Um, the matter of tent making, the one thing I picked from him, which I would like maybe to pinpoint, is that Paul was not sinning. Mm. I think that's very clear. Yeah. Mm. He, was, he may not have been doing the ideal. Later on, he corrects them, but he was not in sin. Mm. So I think we should not, uh, we should not put such... such Stringency. Uh, you know, so it's not such... We should not put such rules, mm -hmm. such major rules and say, you shall not do this, you shall not do this. I like build as you see fit, as mm -hmm. long as you are not in sin. In sin. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. because if churches are small, mm -hmm. what do you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have, you have, as I have an acre, you will not say, say, I will not plant sukuma because I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. And, and planting sukuma is taking care of your family. Paul was taking care of himself. So the, the line is, I think, a little thin. When the, the believers, the, the ideal church should take care of its ministers. The gospel should take care of its ministers. But we live in a, in a mm -hmm. practical world with practical things. Mm -hmm. And we adapt us mm -hmm. as situations come. Mm -hmm. Yet we know mm -hmm. what the truth is. But if the gospel you preach is not able to take care of you fully yet, mm -hmm. Don't be offended. Mm -hmm. Do what you must do. Wow. Well, yeah. Now that prayer is one of your strong talents, <laughs> as it were. Please yes. comment on the National Prayer Day. How the effective only thing I'll is say this? Yes. I wanted to say a very tough thing and, and say, well, mm -hmm. well, but let me keep quiet because we are on TV. Uh, but the question of how valuable it is, how valuable is it? How effective, yeah. How effective is it? Mm -hmm. Mm, I've asked myself that question many times. Mm. And sometimes I feel like, well, 
They should have just said, let a few bishops gather, mm -hmm. a few church people gather, a few holy ghosted people gather, and let them pray and prophesy over the nation, and that let them become the national prayer. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. Let it become the national prayer day. But now that uh, they choose to go that way, well, they do their thing, we do our thing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It does not, uh, it does not uh, break a leg. Let them, you cannot <laughs> go and tell them not to do what they do. Yeah. But they need, and even if you told them it doesn't add too much value, you're just having breakfast. <laughs> they will not understand it. Yeah. They will not see it. So let them do their thing, yeah. let us do our thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Facebook, the Instagram, and all those. Uh, we found some people coming up and uh, having a lot of emotions, becoming very emotional. Apart from sh the shouting, emotional till you find a pastor is uh, breaking down on the, the platform. How uh, prepared should this be, or how far should we go on that one? And then on the second one, I would like to ask uh, maybe on the uh, bread and butter asking for the money how what are the limits because uh during this time of covid i tried to watch out and i found there are people, there are people who are forcefully asking for money with a lot of emotions and uh, they were going beyond the limits maybe according to me but what would be the limits of their asking on a lighter note mm. god has all kinds of people yes. <laughs> very strange ones there's one who was slapping the sick and they get healed. Do hit the stomach and you are healed. And I'm sure if such one was online, mm. oh, I tell you, you'd be trending. <laughs> well, there is that level of freedom. There's that level of, uh, of yeah, freedom. However, we all seek maturity to always find the best method, the best ways in which we can handle ministry. It's like prophesying. When people are beginning to prophesy and they have heard from God, my children, my children, I love you. Mm -hmm. They cry first. But as you mature in Christ, uh, for you to say, my children, my children, I love you, you, you don't have to cry. <laughs> so we allow people to grow. We allow people to still come. But if it's a genuine cry mm. and you couldn't have helped it, it will have its effect and impact. If it is genuine. Mm -hmm. If it was drama, you know, if it was, <laughs> you know, to influence the viewers, because mm -hmm. the viewership has been down, mm -hmm. you have your reward. <laughs> <laughs> and people can always design, even unsaved people, yeah. can always design a genuine pastor and a genuine minister. Mm. Uh, so I think the best thing is to seek, to do the best for God, the best we know how, and also be willing if we are corrected, if we find uh, the better way. You see, Second Corinthians, and on First Corinthians 13 is a whole chapter on love. Towards the end it says, and now, I mean, First, first Corinthians, sorry, 12, is a whole chapter on gifts of the Spirit. And then towards the end it says, and now I show you a more excellent way. And then it shows a whole chapter on love. And so I think we should all seek to help ministers mm. to find the more excellent way. Mm. It's like Apollos was very eloquent in Acts 18 to 24, 27. 828 actually, very eloquent, very good speaker, amazing person in speech, but his doctrine was only the baptism of John. So when Akira Priscilla heard him in Ephesus, they said, this guy is a good speaker. The only challenge, his message needs adjustment. So they shared with him, the Bible says, more accurately, the word of God. So what we should say is, if you fight such a brother, if you have a contact with them, if you can reach them, you can talk to them on the side and say, brother, I see God is really using you, you know, how about probably you prepare yourself and cry in the room first, then when you come, you wipe your face and then be bold, be confident to declare the word of God. We can help each other as it were, mm -hmm. so that we don't tear them and discourage them at mm -hmm. the same time. On matters raising money, online is a very big potato. Let me tell you a story. When we went on TV uh, a couple of years ago, in 2010, first October, um, there was a crisis in terms of how money was being handled online. People were selling water, they were claiming all kinds of stuff, and it was drama. So the Lord said to me, go and battle for the soul of the church in the nation. And so when we came online, we decided not to put any uh, call for an offering 
We believed God that the church would finance the program and we have done that for 10 years wow. without asking for an offering. But now God also had mercy on us. Now he has brought us on TV and he has permitted us now to ask for an offering. Mm. But you can see having given them leave for 10 years, now we can ask for offering but in a more balanced way because there's nothing wrong. Listen, a story is told of a man who went to preach in America and you know America has money, I hear, but we discovered it doesn't have money. China has money, but they're hiding it. So, uh, so he preached in this church and they just gave him like $40,400. Then another guy from Uganda went to the same church a few months and he did some strange things. And after he preached, he really used some levels of extreme ways of raising money. He raised $10,000, which was a million. So the pastor was asking the host, how come that me, I got $400 and the man who came and uh, did some games here, you guys gave him 10,000. He said, no, he asked, he preached, then he asked. You, when you preached, you didn't ask. <laughs> so which one is the more excellent way? So, <laughs> none of the above. There should be a balance as it were. There's time to ask probably mm -hmm. and say, I have preached to you the word of God. Just speak nicely. Don't manipulate. Don't say, if you don't give today, this thing is shutting down because we have no money. You know, so it is your money that's going to keep us here online. Don't, don't, don't say that because it is God keeping you online. It's not their giving. Don't manipulate anybody. Mm -hmm. Just say, it is written in the word of God that when you hear the word of God, then you do what? You give. You give. And here are the numbers in which way you can give and I'll be waiting to receive your offering. And let me pray for you. When you do it innocently and well and maturely, I'm telling you the truth, it looks like in the beginning you're not getting offering, mm -hmm. but God, mm -hmm. whom you serve, mm -hmm. will send you one giver who will cover all the days you did not receive offering. Because mm -hmm. God knows how to balance his mathematics. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Pastor Sunsa, would you like to comment on governing emotions while uh, ministering no. online? No. Okay. <laughs> That's already okay. a question. <laughs> All right. Um, many times in ministry, there is the, in this century, there is a lot of use of jargon, uh, big words when preaching the gospel uh, in order to appear maybe more revelatory or deep. <laughs> So how, uh, how should a minister balance uh, simplicity in bringing out the gospel and also bringing light and understanding to the people of God? I think, thank you, I think that uh, the message of the gospel, the principle in preaching in every kind of way is simplicity. Mm. Simple. Paul talks like that. He says that uh, we just preach Christ mm -hmm. and him crucified. I've been studying some of the men of God that have, uh, have of, of the previous century, those who have gone before us. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed at those guys who had impact. Mm -hmm. Those guys who had impact preached nothing than the scriptures like they are. Mm -hmm. Not getting some vocabulary and coining words and trying to explain them and expound them and uh, and and sound thumbed, sorry, that's a which it's not <laughs> sound uh, learned and all that and all that. Uh, there's a book we read one time that there are different kinds of churches, mm. and one of them is called a university church. A university church is the kind of church where we want to be intellectual. And uh, we come and explain, explain these concepts, these spiritual concepts and these spiritual mysteries. And uh, you know what I mean? And, uh, but yeah, there is a place of explaining mysteries and mm -hmm. all that and all that. But it must be explained in simplicity. Mm -hmm. We must be the kind of preachers that when we stand before people, a professor will understand what we are saying and a standard eight liver will understand what we are saying at the same time. Mm. 
and they will feel comfortable mm -hmm. and they'll feel communicated to mm -hmm. and they'll feel that yeah how you do that that must just be the grace of god mm -hmm. and the anointing and so the gospel I, I, think about listen to t.l osborne i hear there is a city in heaven by his name right now mm -hmm. because of his impact all over the world mm -hmm. but listen to him uh, branham did not end up well, those are stories. We were not a part of it. Mm -hmm. We are not a farming or, or, or what was the opposite of a farming. We are not discrediting. agreeing or discrediting and all that. But listen to him preach. Go listen to him. Listen to Catherine Kuhlman. Listen to her preach. That woman shook the world. Listen to read stories of Maria, Eta, and the rest of the people. You will be shocked. Mm -hmm. The things we are preaching around are not what they were preaching. <laughs> they are no mysteries to explain. <laughs> <laughs> they were only preaching Jesus Christ yeah. loves you. Mm -hmm. They are the revelation of the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. For God loved the world so much mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes will mm -hmm. not perish but have everlasting life. You know we forgot that kind of preaching. We did, and they understood the love of God so much and they were full of that love. They were full of the grace of God. They, 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 they were talking like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And all they wanted were people saved. Share that love. Mm -hmm. Heal the people. They were so moved. Mm -hmm. Wigglesworth, Smith Wigglesworth is one he talked about. Mm -hmm. He didn't even know how to cast mm -hmm. demons. He just ate people. Now that's not the gospel. <laughs> that's not a mystery. It is just eating somebody in the anointing. Uh, and they get and, healed. Yeah. I think let's come down to us. Let's come down and leave the moon. Yeah. Let's come down here and preach to our mm -hmm. generation mm -hmm. in a way and our environment. Mm -hmm. Now some of us are preaching like Americans <laughs> and like Europeans. And you're preaching to Kianchokoma people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to, to belittle my village. <laughs> you are preaching to people in Kawa. Kawa what? Wendani. Kawa mm. Sukus, Kawa Wendani. 40, 40, 44. Mm. Are we, and you are, try, and you, are, you are speaking until they scratch their hands. <laughs> they were never supposed to scratch their hands. Yeah. They were supposed to be touched in their hearts. Yeah. Bring the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in simplicity. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? Mm -hmm. If you know him, you will know he is simple. Mm -hmm. And he speaks in a simple way. Amen. Because we don't know him, we are replacing mm. our knowledge, knowledge for him and love for him with methodologies and uh, presentation, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, maneuvers, mm -hmm. God have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. You are watching the Apostolic Clinic, and uh, let's go back to the simplicity of the gospel. We are going to take one more question. My name is uh, Pastor Kelvin Munene. My first question is this. The church is a voice and should be a voice and also in the nation. Like now, which are the strategies that should the church voice be heard? Like now in Kenya and is not ignored. Number two, we are now, it's like Kenya is entering in a political uh, a time. How should the voice of the church penetrate through the political noise and it is heard and not ignored? Thank you. Wow. Thank you. So, Apostle, you, you could ask, take that question on. Yeah, yeah thank you, maybe Pastor on Kelvin, mm -hmm. for that question. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things I know we are live, and some of the things we keep them to the back boardroom, but I'm involved in the back side uh, talks on the oneness of the church. We are moving the church in Kenya from unity to, to a more accurate word, oneness. That's what you have said is a cry from every county. We, in the days of Corona, when only 15 people were allowed to meet, we began a movement of prayer. We were calling, return, we were calling it Return to Righteousness. We did a second one called Return to Oneness. And what happened was, we mobilized all the counties for 15 senior bishops and pastors to gather and pray to return to God as leaders. And then we did a second time, uh, as it were, and we gathered here in the city of Nairobi to kind of do a closure and bring oneness. And then what has happened is we are now taking strategic steps. One of them is 
to encourage every umbrella body wherever they are within the evangelical Pentecostal charismatic apostolic as it were to come together and have a national platform that speaks as one voice so that even if that group releases a statement the other group releases a statement is actually one statement and then we have also incorporated professionals and we appreciate very great teams like the Kenya Christian Professionals Forum who do the research to investigate so that whatever the bishops are saying is accurate so that even if we're presenting our data we are speaking one voice that effort is going on the other aspect is the church spiritually has had a challenge because the devil wouldn't want the church together so the church has been very divided and because of injustices or breakaways injustices or fights and quarrels among church leaders so what is happening is we have proposed actually a national reconciliation and cohesion within the church church reconciliation and cohesion and there are certain specific leaders talking to those leaders talking to those leaders find ways to bring them together including proposing powerful things like having a national church tribunal mm -hmm. where if there are church cases they don't go to court they go within the brethren mm -hmm. as it were and there's a lot that is going on part of it i can share uh in the you know online and in public until the whole documents are complete but 80 percent of the work has been done in not only preparing for what is coming as it were in the political season but also actually for the church for instance we have sections of the nation where the church sometimes gets bumped and there's persecution and nobody talks and so all those things are being taken care of so the church can speak in one voice mm. and it's very serious some of the things that have been happening mm. and so our unity and our oneness is a powerful powerful force that the world can handle mm. so what the enemy has done is to keep the church as divided as possible so i want to ask our audience here tonight that play your part, play your role, take your position to enhance oneness in your preaching, in your behavior, in your attitude, avoid breakaways, avoid things that divide the body, let's all grow together because that way we are stronger and we are mightier. And I tell you the truth, uh, if you look at scripture, the priest, the prophet, the king, they worked together and we are looking forward for a moment and I believe that moment is now when the church is working together with the powers that be to shape thinking and show direction to the nation. Mm -hmm. And that is the time. And we will not allow the enemy to break us and divide us. Amen. That's powerful. It's great to know that church leaders are going back to the drawing board and restoring the church to oneness. Uh, as we come to the end of the show, I'm going to ask Pastor Sunta and also Apostle David in 10 seconds to just give a parting shot. Yeah, uh, I think I would like to go to the beginning as we come to a close of this uh, program that, uh, you know, offense, that, that touched me a lot. Uh, and I just quickly thought as, as uh, he was talking that uh, we need not to be offended with God. We need to be careful not to take offense with God because really what has gone on it's not the doing of God. Mm -hmm. We need to be offended with the right person. <laughs> the one who is the source of this. Mm -hmm. is the one we need to be angry. Angry about and aggressive about. Against him. Not with God. God mm -hmm. did not do anything mm -hmm. that is, uh, is, is wrong. That does not mean it passed him. It happened without him. But uh, also the church was, was found flat-footed. So there's, it's a... A relationship there that needs to be sorted out yeah secondly um, I think this is time also to I think we are getting feedback when you find that your church has a cut by half or by whatever number I think that that's also feedback which we needed very badly how comes that a half which is a hundred people mm -hmm. have remained but another half have left what what's the characteristic mm -hmm. of the people the hundred that was left and what's the characteristic of the people that have remained whatever is the matter with the people that have remained is what now we need to realize stand in them know them and start noticing that if we are going to have an intact church mm -hmm. 
then there are certain things we need to do and make sure we are all inclusive. Mm -hmm. It's not, we make sure everybody is, is coming to these things that these hundred that is left have come to, so that in the future, you can be able to know, I, the numbers I have are two members mm -hmm. of my church. Wow, powerful. Let's go back to the drawing board. Apostle, in 10 seconds, please. I just want to say in closing that as we reset, change, adjust, re-strategize to strengthen the church, we're going to have quality. Let's go for quality. And as soon as we have quality, let's go and gather the harvest because there are more, more, more people out there that need to come to the kingdom. So this is the time to double our efforts. We need a new crop of harvest to come into the kingdom. Sure. And we must use all resources, all money, all strategies. In closing in 1996, I came across a newsletter whose vision in a ministry from Europe, preaching the gospel using all means possible. I encourage us to use all means possible mm -hmm. to bring the harvest. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Sunta and Apostle Juma for being such a powerful uh, panelist. Thank you, our viewers and uh, audience who have been with us here throughout and even asking your questions. Thank you very much. You can give uh, yourself a clap. We appreciate you for staying tuned to Elevate TV and also watching this show, The Apostolic Clinic. I have been your host, Linda Talam. See you once again later.